guys, and welcome back to Eden. So, let's just jump right back in. Lavier made an astonished face inside. Apparently, the only thing in this facility in er, Inaba did not know about were, the, or were state secrets and Scion's research. How did it go? Inaba made sure that... Er, blah, 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 made sure there was nobody else in the hallway and whispered so only Lavier could hear him. Everything is taken care of on my end. There will be no problems for the cleaners. You're always quite fast. I wonder, did you catch him a little off guard? It would seem he had some training, but I wouldn't have called him a professional. I guess they're running out of pieces as well. Well, so long as you weren't injured. You'll cause a misunderstanding if you say that. It's natural to console a subordinate. Of course, there are many who aren't capable of such things. Major. Hmm? You really worry about people, don't you? Actually, it seems like that's all you do. Lavier whispered all in one breath. Inaba smiled at Lavier, who appeared to be baffled by her own utterance for some reason. Everyone lives their own way. Whether you live for yourself or live for others, that is your own decision. A life of earnest or earnestly protecting and tending to someone that isn't bad either. Though, it's not that glorious of a life. With a tiny laugh, Inaba patted her shoulder. Making you, or making you take a dangerous job where your accomplishments can't even be recognized isn't something I would consider admirable. That is true. You just have to hand down orders. I... I just have to follow them. I see. It had been barely a year since Lavier was assigned to this facility. Inaba carefully assessed her abilities and gave her many unofficial assignments such as tonight's. She has never once failed and performed splendidly. To Inaba, she was a rare kind of subordinate. How did the other one go? Or how did the other one do? No idea. We still haven't gotten the report. Was it alright to let or to have him do a job like this all of a sudden? You've seen Haruna's record, haven't you? She cast her eyes down and was staring intently at the floor. Lavier. I haven't seen his records. I know better than anybody just how capable he is. Inaba silently stared at her. Although her tone was indifferent, there was a convol or convoluted melody or medley, sorry, of emotions behind her words. He may have been her superior, but that didn't mean he knew everything about his subordinates. If you know, then you should understand. Haruna could take care of it. He may have the ability, but whether or not he's trustworthy is a different story. Spies go through formal procedures and get assigned here. If word were to get out that we or that we're purging him, I'm not so sure we can trust Officer Warrant Haruna so easily. Hmm. Inaba brushed off, or brushed the stubble on his chin. I think you'll understand after this assignment is over. He's not the type who would go against the orders of a superior officer. We should just let him undertake these dangerous jobs. It won't be in the military's favor if he gets rusty. Besides, it's only my head on the line if he turns on us. No big deal. Lavier swallowed hard and peered closely at Inaba's face. Even so, his expression did not change. Hey, Lavier. Yes. Wanna know why I have so much faith in Ro Haruna? Why? We're accomplices from, er, from way back. Inaba grinned, a bit surprised at how gloomy his voice sounded. The uninformed girl did not hide her bewilderment as she gazed at him. My heart was terrifyingly calm. My footsteps chiseled a uniform rhythm into the carpet with each step. The beat echoed in my head as I made my way through the halls. This was, an, this was my other self, one I had not released in quite some time. Although it was brief, 
I was overjoyed by the fact that I had been able to return to who I was when I fought on the front lines. The transition was not difficult. I had simply resumed doing something I had done many times before. Without going easy, and with no hesitation, I took a single human life with these hands. Ro! A voice echoed in the empty space. The maid girl rushed over to me with a light pitter-patter in her gait. Two lar or her two large bulges, which did not suit her childish face, bounced along, and I quickly looked away. What is the matter? It's quite late. It had been a few days since I learned she was, an, or she was of an age where it wasn't fitting to refer to her as a girl. And, hold up, hold up, oh god, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, there it is. I should just really be pressing H. <laughs> However, I couldn't help but to think of her as younger. I do not believe you are on the night shift, are you? Do you happen to suffer from, uh, poriomania? Am I some senile old man? I'm just on a nighttime stroll, and you? It's Alicia. She was really insistent. And you, Alicia? The radio broke. A radio. Alicia held out her old-fashioned ra or fashion-looking radio in her hands. <coughs> it has been in bad shape for a while now. Ground-based broadcasting conditions have been horrible as of late. Are you sure the problem is with the radio? Um, the truth is, I tried to fix it myself, but when I started tampering inside, it ended up in a semi-unrecoverable state. So it isn't that it was in bad shape, you just broke it. <laughs> I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to old machines like this. I heard Cali or Callius was good at fixing things, and thought I would ask for his help. I see. Alicia affectionately gazed at the radio. It was probably quite precious to her. I arranged to meet him in the parlor, but he never showed up, so I came to find him. Have you seen him? I haven't. Maybe he's working late. Do you really think so? He had complained before about his relief not showing up on time. Well, that happens a lot. His relief probably wouldn't come for a while. The relief for Callus's original job, that is. Are you in a rush to have that radio repaired? It is not urgent. Why? She tilted her head. Then why don't I repair it? I'll call Sergeant Callus. Or what? I'll let Sergeant Callus know. Okay. Oh, bro, you can fix radios. I haven't, or I've had to repair transceivers in or in the field on occasion. I don't mind working with my hands. Oh, then may I trouble you? I really do not mind if it takes some time. Yeah. I took the radio from her hands. It seemed to be quite an antique, but it should still be pretty simple inside. Then again, no radio was ever that complex in the first place. Ugh. I reached at my waist on reflex, only to find an empty holster. I clicked my tongue in frustration. Duh, okay, I guess H doesn't work. Well, I tried. Although I was prohibited to fire, maybe I really should have kept my sidearm just in case. Ro? Oh my gosh, they're cute. Be quiet. Huh? I could hear the familiar echo of the soldier's boots coming one after the other. Judging from the footsteps, I'd guess ten, no, twenty people were coming. They were approaching slowly, but were undoubtedly coming towards this hall. Steady, steady and unhesitant movements, but not bloodthirsty. There was a slight impatience to them. I clicked my tongue again. Did I mess up? No, I couldn't have made a mistake. And just for argument's sake, if I were somehow discovered, there would have... Been a, there would have at least been an alarm. It was more likely that something else had occurred, but since they were coming this way, I couldn't help but feel anxious. Alicia remained quiet like I asked. Her, ga 
er, and gazed at me with a concerned look on her face. If something were to happen, I couldn't involve an innocent civilian girl. I had to ensure her safety first and foremost. Alicia, come with me. Huh? Ro, what is it? Never mind that. I can't leave you here. I forcefully grabbed her hand. Where are you going? A clear, dignified voice ran out, rang out. A voice that reverberated through my ears and touched my heart as she slowly walked over. A slow, steady gait. It was a girl so short, delicate, and sweet that she looked as if she might break if someone were to touch her. <gasps> Is it Scion? I could not avert my gaze as she walked over. My eyes were glued to her. It's Scion! It is so Scion! It is totally Scion! Scion! Alicia quietly whispered. She didn't need to say it. I already knew the girl before my eyes was Scion. I told you to take me with you if you were going somewhere. I think I'm getting... No, no, I shouldn't give her that voice. At all. No. The girl, Scion, halted and turned her absent eyes toward me. The sound of her voice brought me to my senses, although I still felt the presence of some yet unseen people gathering around us. I don't know what you're talking about, but we have a situation. Situation? Oh, the soldiers. It doesn't really matter to me. Do they bother you? She seemed to realize the hall was being surrounded. There's no way I wouldn't be. Okay, everyone get back, you're in the way. She said in a flat tone and surveyed the perimeter. Although her words were stern, she didn't put much feeling into them. Yes, okay, uh, I got it, perfect. But even so, her voice was strangely soothing. Uh, Ro. Yes? Are you not going to tell the soldiers that there is nothing to worry about as well? Oh, uh, that's right. It appeared I was a bit dumbfounded by Scion's sudden arrival. I refocused and hurried to where the soldiers were surrounding us. There was no real, or there was no reason for me to flee now that I knew what was going on. They backed down after I spoke to the sergeant major commanding them and informed him I would take responsibility for returning Scion to her room. Thank you very much, Ro. Alicia watched over our negotiation attentively, jogging or jogged over and bowed. It doesn't really matter to me, but I glanced at Scion, who was staring at me for some reason. Alicia nodded and faced her. Scion, why are you? That's my line. Don't leave without telling me, Alicia. Ah, oh, sorry. You seem to be concentrating on your work, so I thought it would be bad to bother you. I've never once thought of you as a bother. There's no need for such a silly concern. Scion chided her. Alicia bowed, it, er, bleh, bowed gently and concentrated her eyes on Scion. But Scion, I can't believe you came out. Yes, from what I heard earlier, Scion ne almost never showed herself before others. I had a strange premonition, and just couldn't stay put. Premonition? Scion, did you... No, it's nothing. Scion shook her head. I've had a lot of work lately, so I just wanted a small change of pace. I may have troubled the soldiers unnecessarily. She showed an unpleasant smile before sharply turning away. I could see two shadows approximately ten meters behind her. They were the two who were supposed to guard her tonight. They still seemed perplexed that Scion had suddenly showed herself, but wouldn't withdraw with the other soldiers. It's no problem. A change of pace once in a while uh, helps the troops on their toes. Or keeps the troops on their toes. Though there are no peop or there are people that will never change regardless of the environment we're put into. A wolf won't lose his fangs, even if he gets lost in a flock of sheep. What would you be referring to? Some 
something boring, she said curtly and shook her head. I didn't know what she wanted to say, but decided not to think about it too deeply. She knows! She knows! Oh gosh, she knows! By the way, who are you? I straightened my posture and turned to salute her. Warrant Officer Roharuna of faculty, or Research Faculty, Number 703's Defense Unit, Platoon 11. Ro Haruna. She stared at me intently with those deep, unmoving eyes. Are you the one who was assigned here a few days ago? Yes. I've heard about you. I'm sorry to have not introduced myself sooner. Good god, she's so cute! I get so many, like, screenshots of this game. Oh my god. She spoke in a refined voice and slightly bent her knees for a small bow. Not at all. It was a quick bow, but she moved with such grace. I could see it now. Her behavior was certainly as that of a princess. It's just... I've never actually requested protection. All of this makes me want to scream for everyone to leave me alone. A princess with a sharp tongue at that. Furthermore, just leaving my room causes such a stir. You soldiers just need to calm down. She also seemed to have her share of complaints. Could she just be Scion's body double? Is there something you want to say? Uh, maybe? Her mouth warped into a sarcastic grin and she drew closer. No, it's not much. Not much what? Don't beat around the bush. Say everything you want, clear as crystal. Ambiguity, or ambig, ambig, eh. I, I can't say that word, apparently. Ambiguity, I guess, isn't good. I apologize, I bowed. In this place, I am Scion's guard, which makes her my superior. Scion, isn't that enough? Yes, I said too much. She gave another quick bow. Well then, I will excuse myself. It appears my presence here will only cause trouble. Alicia, I'm going back to my room. Come with me. Alicia nodded and walked up to her side. Please wait, I'll accompany you as well. The guards, who kept their distance, couldn't be relied on. Although she was just going back to her room, I said I would take her re take responsibility. I had no intent of seeing the princess off here. But she shook her head. Unnecessary. Alicia is with me. Besides... Didn't you just finish your work? She knows! I couldn't move as those eyes, which seemed to have her to see through everything, fell upon me. Did she know, or...? Do take care. Thanks. Scion's mouth looked like she was smirking as she said that. Or was that a smile? It was hard to tell. She knows! Ah! She knows! She calmly entered through the door the maid girl had opened for her. Inaba, who was lounging as usual, quickly rose and saluted Zion. Salutations, I am sorry about earlier. That was really impolite. It's a little scary to be so sought after. But I should have informed you before leaving my room. Her words were thick with sarcasm. The usually cheerful Alicia also bowed her head down and did not try to interject. It would be a great help to me if you could. Of course, I don't mind if you move freely throughout the interior of this research facility. The interior of the research facility, indeed. Sion muttered as if there was something she wished to get off her chest. Inaba knew what she meant, but pretended not to notice. At any rate, it has been several months since you last left your room by yourself. We thought something had happened, so I ordered some soldiers to pursue. Something is always happening here. It is nothing serious, simply a part of the duties required to maintain this facility's safety. Inaba maintained his composure as he answered her. It is, or 
it is what any commanding officer of the guards would have done, Major Inaba. Not just you. I won't worry about it, but... Anything overdone, instead, gives birth to trouble. Do not forget that. The non-commissioned officers are just doing their jobs. The Earth Evacuation Project will soon enter its final stages. That is why it is necessary to maintain your safety more than ever. She stared at Inaba with cold eyes before a short nod. But this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!